world! Welcome to another exciting episode of Who, What, When, Why, because when you're here, the where is always Wallingford. And today I'm excited to introduce someone who is no stranger to Wallingford, even though we haven't seen him around in quite some time, Associated Press journalist Yusuf Pham. Thanks, ACB. It's good to be home. Now, while I would love to take credit for inspiring you to be here today, I know our conversation is more of a warm-up for you. Is that right? A dress rehearsal, if you will? (laughs) Yes, that's correct. I've been invited to deliver the commencement speech tomorrow at Moses Y. Beach Elementary. And as you can probably tell, I'm not the best public speaker. So a little extra practice couldn't hurt. (laughs) Well, I'm sure you'll be great. But would you mind explaining, for our listening audience, of course, why the school has chosen such a poor public speaker to deliver the commencement speech at such an important event. (laughs) Well, well, ACB, the Associated Press recently updated the story for the namesake of the school. Moses Y. Beach. As their founder. Their founder? That's right. The founder of the Associated Press is from Wallingford? That's correct, ACB. So, handwritten letters held by his family recently confirmed what had previously been only speculation. Wow, well, you've got to love primary sources. Well, I'm a journalist, ACB. You know what I do, and I'm sure by being an AP journalist with a connection to Wallingford, played no small part in my selection to speak in Moses Y. Beach's honor tomorrow's ceremony. And for those in our audience who are unfamiliar with the Associated Press, uh, the AP News Agency bought together five New York City newspapers in the mid-1800s. All of them were interested in reporting on the Mexican-American War. This war literally reshaped the United States. Add in California, Nevada, Utah, and New Mexico to the Union. Not to mention parts of Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and I believe also Wyoming. The treaty ending the war established the Rio Grande as the border between Texas and Mexico. So I'm sure you can imagine this war was a pretty big deal. The general idea was for the five newspapers to stop spending money and sacrificing accuracy by competing with each other for the fastest story and catchiest headline. So instead, they would pull together their resources to gather and share the news, originally a strategy to rein in outlandish spending costs. This idea to cooperate created something far more important, public trust in the news. Because the same news was reported in several newspapers. Exactly. So the AP is now widely known for its commitment to objectivity and accuracy all because efficient news gathering laid the original foundation for a public trust. A trust that seems to be eroding in our current post-truth media landscape. (sighs) There is harsh reality, but you're not wrong. In fact, that is all the more reason why a global news organization that plays a vital role in informing the entire world is so concerned about local stories and factual reporting. And why they sent you out here to Wallingford for a trial by fire in public speaking. Now, not to put any unnecessary pressure on you, but are you nervous? I'll admit that being inspirational is a lot harder than it sounds. <laughs> Especially when most people in town don't even know who Moses White Beach is. But, you know? Right. What he did. Of course. Or why he matters. Obviously. You have no clue, ACB, do you? <laughs> well, let's just say I'm in the boat, but there's no paddle to be found. <laughs> where, where should we start? The middle, of course. You know how I love to bury the lead. Or as a native son of Wallingford, Connecticut, who embodied the American dream and went on to influence the world, I am of the humble opinion that Moses Y. Beach has been underappreciated and uncelebrated for far too long. So as a result, I felt charged with the responsibility to personally compile the scattered historical references to his transformative life in order to puzzle together a picture for you to frame in sweet remembrance. Is that from your speech for tomorrow? Yep, uh, that's the middle of it. The middle of it, well played. (laughs) But here, I think it makes for a strong beginning. My research introduced me to a Renaissance man of American capitalism, unafraid to fail and determined to succeed. So he harnessed innovation, ambition, and even marriage to reach his goal. Security and prosperity the compelling dream of an orphan boy. 
He was an orphan? Well, born in 1800, the fifth generation on a farm here in town, his parents died when he was a child, and he was apprenticed to a cabinet maker. So his parents died and they gave him a job. Talk about a raw deal. Uh, could have been much worse. It gave him a skill, and these weren't your commonplace kitchen cabinets. These were upscale, handcrafted, one-of-a-kind pieces of furniture, and Moses was good with his hands. Some would say that he was even gifted. So when his craftsmanship became coveted, he earned the right to be paid a pittance of pennies for his extra production. Uh, but Moses kept working, and Moses kept saving, and eventually he bought his freedom. Well, that's a feel-good story. Sure, until you get to the part where an independent teenager with a gift for craftsmanship starts making the popular American-style Windsor chairs and highly stylized cherry and mahogany sideboards for sale. Uh, but the market was too competitive, and his efforts to transition to business manufacturing became a financial disaster. And Moses is left on the brink of being destitute. Definitely a plot twist. Who would have thought selling furniture would be so hard to scale? I guess I never truly appreciated how much IKEA had accomplished. The Swedes finally cracked the code on that one. <laughs> and since the road to success is usually a straight line, I imagine whatever Moses did next led him to greatness. I appreciate your sarcasm, ACV, because you nailed it. All it took was a short stint as an inventor with an engine that never made it to market. Couldn't keep the motor running. A brief journey as a steamboat captain. All aboard! A paper mill innovator at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution. Practically printing money. A newspaper publisher. Stop the presses! A penny paper media pioneer in a race against time. Until the telegram outpaced his boats, horses and pigeons. Extra, extra, read all about it. And wait for this, ACB. A spy. A spy? For who? For us. Well, that's a relief. Moses Y. Beach really did all that? And then he came home and built himself a big old house. Now, the house I've heard of, it's more famous than he is. Well, there are pictures of it in the Smithsonian. So he clearly hired Henry Austin, an up-and-coming architect of the time, to make a statement. Yeah. Which was? The local boy who made good has come home and plans to stay. And he did stay, that much I know. He's buried in the Center Street Cemetery not 500 feet from here. And the days between building that house and being buried in that grave were spent well. As a philanthropist, a patriot, and a legacy maker with an unshaken faith in the role education plays in the American dream, while living, he donated land to Wallenford for the construction of a school that almost didn't bear his name. Tough town. Mm. But it was his own, and he loved it. Well, nothing beats a good homecoming story, especially when that home is where, Yusuf? Wallenford, of course. Damn right. <laughs> so now that we know a bit more about Moses Y. Beach, let's talk about this big speech of yours. Can you give us another sneak peek? What's it all about? Uh, it's the story of my arrival in Wallingford as a boy and what set me on the path to becoming the journalist I am today. It's about our town, our potential, and my first primary source about me. Moses Y. Beach and our Czech Minus. <laughs>